So in a previous video, we looked at troubleshooting this Gen 3 BMS board. And during that video, we showed very briefly replacing the connector on that board. And since it took over 10 minutes to do so, we're going to have a separate video showing the details in replacing that connector. I have a link to that video on the troubleshooting on the top right if interested. And I also have a link at the end of this video. Tools we're going to use in this video include low melt solder. This is from Amazon. This type here is from Northridge Fix. I also get my Amtec 559 flux from Northridge Fix. You're going to see us use some solder wick as well as two irons. The soldering irons we're going to use is the Avon 60 watt with a medium bevel tip. We're also going to use the Heiko 65 watt with a curved or bent round or conical tip, one of my favorites. As you can see here, this connector got damaged when the wrong plug accidentally uh, bumped into it. It just lined up just right as mentioned in that previous video. I didn't actually have video of the failure, but the 10 pin connector went into the 12 pin connector spot. Like one in a thousand chance, but it did happen. We're just going to put some 559 flux on here and going to take some low melt solder. This is for Northridge Fix. This is some really good low melt solder. Just mix it in really good with our unleaded solder here on the board. This stuff will puddle up pretty good after you get it warm and get it moving. And you can see it taking here on the pads and I just usually get a little glob, move it around and work it in and usually it will be done come off by now. So it might be some silicone still under here holding it, but I'm still going to be patient. I don't want to rip any pads. There we go. Yep, definitely some silicone holding it on there. So the, the low melt solders, it works like magic. It, uh, it would have come off extremely quick there. The, the silicone is what was holding it. We'll take our braid here and we'll wick a lot of this solder off because this is going to be low melt mixed with unleaded. I got to get a lot of this silicone off. I'm going to use this brush here that it also comes from Northridge Fix. Some of theirs actually has the Northridge Fix logo. This one has the manufacturer on it, but. That is a really good brush with the uh, stainless steel on one end and the bristle on the other. This little small Jirla screwdriver helps a lot too because this is a very, very fine pitch connector. We'll give it a smiley face. Let's just wick all this solder off and get it really good and clean. I just feel like there's a lot of silicone residue left on here as well, so I'm going to clean this very well. I'm going to go the extra mile here to clean this, so here's your another smiley face. I'm going to prep the pads with some of my leaded solder here for the hot air. It should be a really nice looking job when we get done. So let's go ahead and clean this off. Yeah, I feel a lot better about this being clean. I'm going to go ahead now and remove the good connector off the older Gen 2 board. It's a donor. I'm going to use the hot melt here as well after the flux. and We're going to do the same thing here. Just work it in. 
to the unleaded solder. Just let it mix in. You see how good this low melt solder just stays liquid. It's so easy to work with. The connector is probably really already turned loose. I'm just going to be patient so I don't damage the pins here. I would imagine it's going to be a little bit of silicone up under this connector as well. I actually bumped the lens of the camera here on the microscope. Let me go up just a little. We should be ready to come off and there we go yep definitely has some silicone but not near as much as the gen 3 board did so now i just want to take time to clean the connector up well before we put it back on the gen 3 board a little bit of flux and braids going to go a long way here helping us clean off the low melt solder that might be left on the pins Yeah, there's some of that silicone. We got to get it off. Now a little bit of high percentage alcohol and the brush, and we're cleaning up pretty nice here. Awesome, like a new one. So right here, I really want to do hot air. It would be such a pretty job. But with the components on the back of the board and me being unfamiliar with this connector, I'm a little bit worried about hot air. So I'm actually going to pull this solder back off right quick here. And it's not going to be as easy to do it this way. But I think the hot air will just have it set right down pretty. But I'm going to go pin to pin since I don't want to damage the connector with hot air or uh, the transistors on the back of the board. I don't want to make them turn loose either. So. There we go. Just got it nice and clean. One more smiley face. I'm just trying to be cautious here. I'd hate to damage the connector on video. And I really don't have another donor board with this right side connector, honestly. This is really the only one that I have at this time. Just hit a pin here to hold it down. Get it straight. Just keep it in place. Let's hit a few pins. There we go. We ought to be in place now. We're just going to add some more 559 flux and go over all the pins. I'm actually going to put an excess amount of solder on these pins instead of just the bare minimum because I'm not real sure how good the sides are going to hold. So. I'm going to go for strength here more than looks, so just bear with me. I could definitely um, pull more solder off. I'm going to leave a good bit of solder on some of these pins. That's probably enough to make contact with most of these already, but I'm going to come back and I'm going to add some more. There we go pull some of that off but I might be able to get the side hold down pins back making contact but it's it's hard to get to them really especially this left side of the connector I get asked a lot I'm using the 6337 leaded solder here the rosin core solder I usually use the 0 0.032 size the most but I have anywhere from 0 0.02 to I think 0 0.062 let's clean up see what it looks like
everything's got enough solder to make a good connection. The second and third pin respectively, they, they got less than the others, but it's still plenty. And I believe the sides did hold very well, so. Let's go through and check all the pins with this little screwdriver. It's hard to find something that can get inside this fine pitch of these pins. Awesome. Everything's good. I like it. So at this point of the video, I started troubleshooting this board again after replacing the connector. And we go through and we see shorts on the boards. We ended up going through and injecting voltage and we found out that the microcontroller itself was faulty. But if you want to see more of that troubleshooting, you can see the link to that video at the end of this one. I'll have a link down in the video description of a lot of the tools we used here today, including the little jeweler screwdriver set that comes in handy, the low melt solder, the irons, even the microscope. So if you did find this video helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and God bless.